In this video, I will be discussing a case of rosette cataract with subluxation. We will look at its preoperative evaluation and surgical management. In primary gaze, we can see a rosette cataract and around 2 clock hours of subluxation in the temporal area. On right gaze, the subluxation appears to be around 4 clock hours from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. It is therefore always important to assess the degree of subluxation by asking the patient to look in the direction of subluxation. Patient also had a grade 3 nucleosclerosis. Best corrected visual acuity was finger count 2 meter PR accurate. There was no evidence of vitreous prolapse. Posterior segment appeared to be within normal limit. Patient was also a myope with axial length of around 26.08 millimeters. Coming to the choice of endocapsular device. The general guideline is that if the subluxation is less than 3 clock hours, CTR, capsular tension ring can be used. In subluxation of 3 to 6 clock hours, a modified CTR or CONI with a single loop can be used or a capsular tension segment CTS can be used. In 6 to 9 clock hours of subluxation, CONI with double loop or a combination of capsular tension segment with CTR can be used. If subluxation is more than 9 clock hours or in presence of moderate generalized weakness of zonules, an intercapsular cataract extraction with SFIL or ACIL may be needed. This patient had a subluxation between 3 to 6 clock hours. So the plan was to use a modified CTR with single loop, also known as Sioni ring, named after Dr. Robert Sioni, who modified the CTR by adding a fixation hook that loops 0.25mm anteriorly from the body of CTR, so that it stays above the capsular margin. Free end of the hook has an eyelet through which suture can be passed for scleral fixation. Let's proceed to the surgery. The first step is to make a partial thickness scleral flap in the area of maximum subluxation. In this patient, the subluxation is from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock, so I will be making a flap in the center at 9 o'clock. Conjunctival peritomy is done. Bleeders are cauterized. A trapezoid scleral flap of around 3 mm into 3 mm is made using a green blade, followed by a crescent blade. I am sitting temporarily during this step so that creating the flap becomes easier. Once the flap is ready, I shift to superior position. Side port incisions are made at 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock position. Diluted triamcinolone is injected in the anterior chamber to look for any vitreous. There is no visible vitreous prolapse. Viscoelastic is injected in the area of subluxation as a tamponade to prevent herniation of vitreous and also to prevent dye from going behind. Enter capsule is stained under an air bubble with trypan blue dye. Excess dye is washed. An AC is formed with high molecular weight cohesive viscoelastic. Main port is made at 12 o'clock position using a 2.8 mm keratome. Capsular excess is initiated with the cystitome away from the area of subluxation to avoid stress on zonules. Rexis is continued with the help of capsular excess forcep as it gives better control and avoids excessive pressure on zonules. Here I am using a Haldipurkas capsular excess forcep. Rexis in the area of subluxation is difficult as there is no counter-traction from the zonules and an intact capsular rexis is essential for using CTR or CONI. So we need to be very careful when performing capsular rexis in the area of subluxation. Here the leading edge of rexis is not very clearly visible. Most probably the viscoelastic tamponade I had used prevented staining of capsule in this area. As there is a risk of rexis runaway, I decided to do the littles maneuver of rexis rescue. The flap is unfolded, grasped and pulled in opposite direction. And then rexis is completed using ripping force rather than a shearing force. A continuous rexis is obtained. Capsular hooks are applied in area of subluxation to support the back during phaco emulsification. This will now act like artificial zonules 
and prevent further subluxation. Iris hooks may also be used for same purpose but carries risk of capsular tear. A gentle hydrodissection between capsule and cortex is done, followed by delineation between nucleus and epinucleus to obtain a golden ring. Viscoelastic is injected to form the anterior chamber. Nucleus is sculpted to create a trench. and then divided into two halves. Nucleus is then emulsified. The parameters are kept low to avoid IOP rise which can cause stress over zonules. Emulsification is carried out in the pupillary plane as an in the bag emulsification may cause zonular stress. Viscoelastic is injected before coming out to prevent collapse of AC. Epinuclear sheet is separated and lifted out first using hydro and then injecting dispersive OVD beneath it. This is known as viscodissection. Once separated, emulsification of epinucleus becomes very easy. Capsular hooks have got disengaged during phaco emulsification, so they are readjusted to hook the capsular margin. Cortical aspiration in the normal area can be done by radial pull, like in routine cases. But in the area of subluxation, there is no counter traction, so a tangential side to side sweeping motion is used to remove the cortex. To facilitate docking of proline, sulcus is widened to create room for the needle by applying the hooks on the iris and injecting viscoelastic under the iris. Needle of a double-ended 9-0 proline suture is passed through the eyelet of Sioni ring. I also prefer to tie a knot over this eyelet to stabilize the proline suture over Sioni. All these steps are done outside the eye. 26 gauge needle is passed through the scleral flap bed about 2 mm from the limbus through the sulcus between capsule and iris to bring it into the anterior chamber. Needle of the proline suture is docked into the 26 gauge needle. Once well engaged, it is pulled outside. The 26 gauge needle is again inserted around 1 mm away from the first site. Same steps are repeated for the other end of the proline suture. A blunt instrument is kept at main port to make way for the needle. This can prevent any inadvertent bite of corneal tissue which may occur while passing the sharp proline needle. The leading haptic of Sioni ring is now introduced into the bag. It is important to keep the sutures adequately pulled as loose sutures may get entangled. The trailing haptic is maneuvered into the bag. A temporary stay knot is placed before injecting the intraocular lens. A foldable single piece acrylic intraocular lens is injected through the main port. and dialed using a dialer. Tension on the suture is then adjusted such that the IOL is centered. Sutures are then tied together using 3 to 4 knots, thus fixing the Sioni and the back to the sclera. Viscoelastic is removed. Pilocarpin is injected. Ports are hydrated. 
AC appears to be a little shallow, so a 10-0 nylon suture is applied on the main port. Scleral flap is sutured using two 10-0 nylon sutures. Conjectiva is closed using 8-0 Y-Krill. This is the post-operative picture of the patient. I will is well-centered and patient had an unaided visual acuity of 6-9. Thanks for watching.